Now we see one Twitter tech example for better understanding of this chi square test. In an anti malaria campaign in a certain area, quinine was administered to 812 persons out of a total population of 3248. The number of fever cases is shown below. So look at here the contingency table is already given to us uh, for observed frequency. Uh, there are two things one is fever and second one is uh, two variables we have one is fever and another one is quinine. Quinine is the treatment. So uh, look at here in this table the persons who are suffering with fever and given quinine is 20. The persons who are not suffering with fever and given quinine is 792. The total persons who has given uh, quinine is 812. Similarly, the persons who are suffering with fever and given no quinine is 220. The persons who are not suffering with fever and given no quinine is 2216. So in this way, the persons who has not uh, given quinine is 2436. Now, the persons who are suffering with fever is 240 and the persons who are not suffering with fever 3008. The total number of uh, uh, population we have taken here 3248. So, we give some name to this. First, uh, I would like to give the name the persons who are having fever. Uh, I will put here A1 and the persons who are not having fever suffering. The persons who are given quinine, I write down here B1 and the persons who are not given quinine is B2. Now it is the intersection of A1 and B1. So we could write here B1, uh, B1 is this one, B2 is this two and similarly we could write here A1 and A2. So this is our uh, we could say that A1, B1, intersection of A1, B1, this is A2, B1, it is A1, B2, it is A2, B2. This is the contingency table of observed frequency and this one is N we have, the population size. Now, uh, what we take the assumption here uh, in our hypothesis, uh, the null hypothesis would be no relationship or association exists between two variables, fever and quinine, that is they are independent, it will mention they are independent. And in respect, uh, uh, the alternative hypothesis would be a relationship exists, that is they, the fever and quinine are related. So, first of all, we have to find out the expected frequency for this because we don't know uh, the uh, frequency distribution of this data. We don't have any expected frequency distribution. So, we will get it through the contingency table. Uh, we will make for the expected frequency. How we get this expectations of A, B? So, look at here A, I, B, J is equal to A, I into B, J over N. So, N is here. So, how we get it, I will explain you here. First of all, if you have to find out the A1, B1, the first uh, look at here, it is A1, B1. We have to find out the expected frequency for A1, B1. So, we get here A1, B1. A1, B1 is equal to, so this is our, I write it down here, it is B1. It is B2, it is over A1, it is over A2 and N. What we have to do, we have to write down the totals, whatever the totals uh, in this uh, expected frequency contingency table, we will write it down the totals only. We will uh, keep blank the internal uh, columns of this, uh, we have, where we have to put the expected frequency. So, how we get the expected frequency, I explain it here. So, it is A1, B1, A1 into B1. So, A1 we have 240 and B1 we have 812 and we would divide it by N. So, N is 3248. So, we get here 
we get here 60. Now we get a1, b2, a1, b2. So a1 is 240 we have and b2 is 2436 divided by 3248. So we get here here 180. Now a2 b1. We get here a2 b1. So a2 b1 would be 812 into 3008 divided by 3 2 3 2 4 8. So we get here it is 752. And finally we get A2 B2 which is 3008 into 2436 over 3248. It is we have 2256. So this we have got here. Now if we have to check we could add these all or we it should be equal to 3248. If we add these all we get the same. So the summation of this is 3, 2, 4, 8. So now we put down these values here in appropriate places. So here we will put down 60, A1, B1 and A1, B2 we get here 180. Here we are putting down 752 and here double 256. Okay. So this we have got the expected frequency with the help of contingency table. Now we put down this value here in analytical table we have made here. So what we have to put down first observed frequency we have to put down uh, 20, 220, 792 and 2216. So I put down here 20, 220, 792. 792 and the last one is 2216. 2216. The same we have to keep it from the expected frequency table of contingency 60, 180. Here we write down 60, 180, 752. and 2256 2256 now we get out the difference of this o minus e so 20 minus 60 is minus 40 220 minus 180 is 40 plus 40 we have and 792 minus 752 it is plus 40 again and 2216 minus 2256 it is minus 40 again. Now we get the square of this all. So we get here the square of minus 40 is 1600. The square of all is 1600 here. 1600. Now we divide this O minus E whole square by expected frequency what we have got here in the 60. So we divide it by 60. 1600 divided by 60. Uh, simplify here in this column we have to write O minus E whole square divided by e. So O minus V O minus E whole square is equal to 1600 divided by E60 here. So we get here we get here 26.667. 26.667 now in the second we get here 1600 divided by expected frequency is 180 so we get here 8.889 8.889 8 
1689 here 1600 divided by 752 we get here 2.128 and finally 1600 divided by double 2 Five six, so we get here zero point seven zero nine. Now we get the total of these, the summation of these. We get here thirty eight point three nine three. So we have got here thirty eight point three nine three. Now we see the table value in the chi square table. So look at here. Uh, it is the chi square table. Five percent. We are uh, uh, checking it out. So look at here. At the five percent, the degree of freedom. First of all, we have to find out. So I explain you how we get the degree of freedom. This sort of contingency table. So here you see we are in uh, in a contingency table. The degree of freedom v is equal to c minus one into r minus one. Where c is the number of column and r is the number of rows. So look at here. in contingency tables we have two columns and two rows so the degree of freedom would be degree of freedom v is equal to c minus 1 into r minus 1 so column are two and rows is also two so 2 minus 1 We get here one into one, so degree of freedom is one. So we have to look at this degree of freedom one. So here at five percent, the value is three point eight four one. So chi square table value, chi square table value at alpha critical point, uh, at alpha is equal to zero point zero five, the critical Value of this three point eight four one, so which is equal to three point eight four one, and we have the chi square calculated value. What we are getting here thirty eight point three nine three. So it is thirty eight point three nine three. It means this the calculated value is greater than the table value, so it is. Rejected now. If we are beyond this, if we are beyond this, so it's rejection. If we are under this, the value, our value, calculated value is under this value, three point eight four one. So it is accepted. Our null hypothesis is accepted. It is less than, but it is more than this. The thirty eight point three nine three is more than three point eight four one. It is very much more than. So it is rejected. So here we could say that our hypothesis, the calculated value of chi square, the calculated value of chi square is greater than. Greater than the. Table value. Table value. The hypothesis is rejected. Is rejected. It means, and quinine is useful in checking malaria. Checking malaria. So, in this way, we could get on the conclusion of uh, any assumption or the hypothesis through chi square.